Uh, please welcome our next speaker, uh, Paul Holmes. Stuff you can only do because of Twitter. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I, know, uh, I know my talk today is about Twitter, but I really mostly wanted to impress you all with uh, PowerPoint pizzazz. So prepare to be dazzled uh, or prepare to prove that PowerPoint is evil. Uh, I've known Chris Constable for a long time, and uh, he spoke at my conference and suggested that I uh, submit a talk for his. So there it is. Uh, I do a lot of Twittering, uh, and I give a lot of uh, presentations on social media, so I suggested I give a talk about Twitter, and the committee very reluctantly agreed. Um, having no idea what the heck Idea Wave was really about, because I was sick last year, sorry Chris and everyone else. Um, I naturally started thinking about how I could most effectively pimp my stuff. Uh, I thought I can talk about my new food blog, uh, or I can talk about my social media training and consulting and kick-ass website design, um, or I can talk about the upcoming social media camp on uh, June 3rd and 4th at the Victoria Conference Center. So, uh, but then I came yesterday and I figured I really needed to rethink all of this. Um, so I threw away my whole presentation last night, and I started over. My new presentation is called Twittens. Originally, it was going to be called Kittens, uh, but Lord Vardy of the Twittersphere um, suggested that uh, uh, there was some error in my ways, so it is now called Twittens. And I, there's actually a hashtag as well, as with most things on Twitter. So uh, kittens, um, everyone loves them. They're cute and cuddly and a little bit evil, kind of like Chris Constable. <laughs> so I decided uh, to use Chris and kittens metaphorically to, uh, to demonstrate the stuff you can do with Twitter. That in some cases was really, really hard to do before Twitter came along. Uh, naturally, I created a Twitter account for the project. Now, as you can guess, every imaginable use of the word kitten or kitty or cat in combination with cuddles, or cuddling, or cuddly, is pretty much gone on Twitter. So, lesson number one. <laughs> lesson number one, uh, you can be from anywhere. So, uh, uh, are you living in a small town? It doesn't matter. Uh, you can be from anywhere now and nobody will be any wiser. This is an incredible opportunity for industries where location matters. So if you want to get that kick-ass IT job in San Francisco, tell people you live there already, then when you get the job you can move. Uh, or if you want to be an actor on Broadway, hello New York City! Um, in this case, Kitten Cuddly is from Chicago. So he's naturally a fan of Oprah, Barack Obama, the Bulls, and the Bears. <laughs> So lesson number two, the number of followers is becoming less and less relevant. If it impresses the hell out of you that I have 17,000 followers on Twitter, then I will happily play along and pretend that that matters, especially if you want to pay me a lot of money because I'm awesome. Uh, but more importantly is content, and notably in Twitter, it's hashtags. So Kitten Cuddly was here, uh, here was number one on the uh, search for several hours for the hashtag kittens. Uh, five minutes after he joined Twitter, he was number one in his target market. Uh, ask, ask somebody who does search engine optimization for a living and, and search engine marketing how long it takes and how much money it costs to achieve the same thing on Google. Lesson number three, you can meet anyone on Twitter. There were ways to meet people before Twitter came along, but seriously, it was hard. You had to write people letters, emails, call them on the telephone. Talk to strangers in CD nightclubs on Friday nights and try to read their responses, but inevitably fail and fall flat on your face like some sort of creepy loser with no life and no chance at true love. <laughs> but thanks to Twitter, you can meet people who share your interests, and it's easy. I could tell you about how I recruited 25 authors to write for my foodie.ca food blog entirely on Twitter, but that's pale in comparison to Kitten Cuddly, who is all about meeting Democrats. <laughs> Republicans, <laughs> chicks, <laughs> local sports fans, and kittens and kitten lovers the world over, and Americans, because he's from America, so. 
Everyone loves America. Look at that. That is a, that is a piece of work. Um, anyway, I, I think I featured um, enough kit, boat kittens for one presentation. So it's time to move on to my new favorite presentation slide. Uh, this is my favorite slide, outlining the A-plus of social media branding experience for the 21st century. Uh, when we launched foodie.ca, we initially did it on Twitter and Facebook. We had a business plan and uh, no website. On Facebook, we began to bring together, and this is where the laser pointer, if I knew how to use it, would be good. Press the middle button. Oh, the middle one? Woo! Facebook. Did everyone know what that Facebook icon? No, never mind. Um, on Facebook, we began to bring together friends and attempt to get them excited about the new website launch. But on Twitter, however, the focus was on recruiting authors. We followed every food blogger, chef, self-identified foodie, wine lover, beer lover, coffee lover, or food-related Twitter account that we could possibly find. Then we started tweeting about the project. People liked the business plan and signed up as authors. We had 25 authors within a month. Uh, then we launched foodie.ca, the actual website, a few months later. Now initially, about 80% of our traffic came from our friends on Facebook. And if you launch a new website, you'll be shocked at just how much traffic does come from Facebook. Um, now it's about 80% from Google. Today, we are number two under the term foodie on, uh, on Google. And, uh, you know, die Wikipedia, die. <laughs> Uh, we got an email from a TV producer from the Food Network asking us to help promote their new TV show. Uh, how cool is that? <laughs> so, so we did. And we didn't get paid to do it, but it was pretty, pretty cool. Um, I also got a phone call from the PR firm representing Coca-Cola asking us to review a new product that, that Coca-Cola was coming out. And all of this was in a few months. This site's only been around for a few months. So before Twitter, I have no idea how the heck I would have done any of this without falling flat on my face. Um, and by the way, all of my slideshows feature Brad Pitt. And this, <laughs> this particular uh, photograph, for some reason, because um, he's excited, look. Um, so this is a conference about ideas. My conclusions would be to think big, pursue your ideas, and think about how Twitter can help facilitate this. You may be surprised at how successful you can be with just a little effort. So to recap, geography is dead. Viva Las Vegas, baby. You, can't be, you can be number one in five minutes or less, so be number one. And if you're a social leper like me, Twitter can make you cool. And finally, of course, kittens are cute. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs>